I hate when guys text you, did you take the plan B? <laughs> no. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> I'm not done yet. We're going to have to wind that back. Wait, wait, wait. One sec, one sec, one sec, one sec. Oh. One more time for the people in the back. For the people in the back. Start out from the beginning. Thank <laughs> you. 
That's pretty much it, guys. Um, just looking at oh, and I can't forget this one. My own page. You know how the thing goes. All right, I guess all the information and links are sent out. So let me open one more window so I can watch and monitor what I'm doing. You know. Let's take a look. All right. Let me put this down. All right. Hey, um, Jazzy, how's everything going? I hope everything's good. I see people in the building. Wonderful. Um, let me. I'm just looking at both ends. Jazzy, of my how's everything going? Yeah, that was loud. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, welcome guys to another edition here, the Cast Right Channel. As I go by name, Cast Right here. Ah. Uh, Boy, boy, what a week. The week is getting very much turned up, don't y'all agree? A lot of things have been circulating lately throughout the internet. And we're going to have to discuss a lot of things. And as much as I had to um, do my thing, there's no room for error for a lot of things. Um, as you know, and I'm just going through social media, like always. Oh, and for those that want are not familiar, if you want to subscribe to the channel, you know what to do. Hit the red button, hit the top bell for notifications of when I go live or I upload here on the Cast Rain channel. You can also um, follow me on Twitter at Cast Rain 7. And you can now um, add me on Discord as well. And those are the links to find me, add me, and have the conversation, or you want me, or whatever case may be, those are where you can find me. As you know, I have not done much uploads lately because there's not really much to really um, upload lately um, that I have done recent interviews or anything on another channel that I upload here on the Chaos Rain channel. And I'm not saying that no one is willing to I guess work with me, but it's no one's really stepped up to the task yet. 
But like always, the content has to move forward, like always. Um, as y'all know from the title, and this is one of the hot topics of always a discussion, is really about this thing about, you know, the females exploring one's options. Now, mind you, as a man, you know, like most men, you cannot control where these chicks go with, with their yonis, their pussies, and they like to, you know, fling it in other groups of men, much less, you know, get um banged out, beat out, throwed out, whatever you want to call it. As a man, we don't have control of that, and we are clear of this, yes. But here's a funny question that a lot of women don't understand that I should ask. What so bad about the brothers that you had to constantly keep throwing in the face? You think this is going to make the so-called black males, black men, or as a small or collect hole, gonna make view you or change how they see you today? Answer is no. But I understand why you do it because you hoping that by doing this, it's gonna shape in one person so that way you don't have to do much at all and prove on yourself and your bullshit in front of a group of men that you despise and hate. That's what I'm saying. But nonetheless, the title. Ralph Richard Banks, buck broken. Or say, is Ralph Richard Banks, is he broke, is Ralph Richard Banks really broke, broke, buck broken? Buck broken. And before we go into the, before I look at certain articles, and trust me, this will be some reading and maybe I'll open up for people that have their own views about this. But we we'll, let's have this conversation and really examine this as a whole. Um, as you know, this man is, I guess, a graduate of Stanford. And matter of fact, let's pull up his bio because we don't know much about the people that is alleged out here. I mean, alleged. And what's this? Oh, this is the wrong one. They're alleged up here putting out information giving direction what black people should do. And black people, like most of us, or majority of us, we don't really look at the intentions of a lot of people that are out here that's putting out information for our own good. And I guess this is like a short Wikipedia. And there's no picture of the man, but y'all know who he looks like because you see him on the fun thumbnail. So let's share this. Um, Where's my thing? Okay. And one thing, as y'all look into this, we got to be honest here. What, what importance that this man that wrote a book over a decade ago now has resurfaced throughout social media um, and possibly YouTube or any other media outlets where he is not much relevance till now? As you can tell, Ralph Richard Banks, born December 11, 1964. That makes him about to be 58 years old by the end of this year. Is, like I said, a Stanford Law School, and he's studied law, where he taught since 1998. So he's been teaching for roughly almost 24 years. He also teaches in Stanford Graduate School of Education. His scholarship focuses on race, inequality, and the law. Now, let's start right there. This is why this man deals with certain black related issues, not to say black power, but he focuses on race and law. And it makes more since you study law. My questions, which I hope they'll be answered as I go through this, is were you a, a lawyer, Mr. Banks, or you were just an educator? Wh which one is it? And you can tell right here on the left hand side, this is the book he wrote it Is Marriage for White People? how the African-American marriage decline affects everyone. Now, I'm not sure what I mean by affecting everyone because let's be honest. Marriage is on down decline right now in America, unfortunately. So, while if you notice that if black people are getting married or they're not getting married, it's not going to affect the United States economy, much as America as a whole. Matter of fact, I go in front of people. Marriage today is such a big business or a business that's not really of relevance 
that they are promoting that you don't get married for people of certain status. Now, if you're upper status, marriage will probably be the best options for more mobility and possibly more connects. But or if you're a certain status, they will even recommend you don't get married. All right. Early life and education. Ralph Richard Banks grew up in Cleveland, Ohio, and graduated from university school in 1983. I think that's a, I don't know if that's a high school or that's college. Oh, okay. That's what it is. He then enrolled in Stanford University, where he received both bachelor's and master's degree in 1987. He received his JD degree cum law from Harvard School or Harvard Law School in 1994. After graduating from Stanford, Banks wrote regularly about race, culture, inequalities for a wide array of newspapers, including the New York Times, Los Angeles Times, Chicago Tri Tribune, the Plain Dealer, Cleveland, Ohio, and Detroit Free Press, and Detroit News the Atlantic Journal Constitution and the St. Louis Post Dispatch and the Denver Post and the San Francisco Chronicles. Among other, after graduating from law school, Banks practiced law at the San Francisco office of Old Malavari Mayer. He is a member of the California Bar. Hmm. Okay. Academic career. After leaving private practice, Banks served as the Reginald F. Lewis followed at Harvard Law School, where he wrote The Color of Desire, Fulfilling Adapt Parent Racial Preference Through Discriminatory State Action, and the article subsequently appears in the Yale Law Journal. <laughs> oh, what's good? Um, Queen's Virtue, I see you. Okay, what else is on here? Academic career. Uh, oh, I said it right there. All right, following his fellowship banks, clerks for Honorable Barrington D. Parker Jr. of the School Circuit of Court of Appeal. And Banks research address issues relates to race and equality across the variety of domain for criminal justice to employment to the family. He has written and lectured widely in these areas. Professor Banks teaches family law, employment, discrimination, law, race, and law. And the 14th Amendment, he has been a visiting professor at Harvard Law School and University of Virginia Law School. His scholarly writings has appeared in the Yale Law Journal, the Stanford Law Review, the Harvard Civil Rights Civil Liberties Law Re Review, of the Stanford Journal of Civil Rights and Civil Liberties, the Vanderbilt Law Review and the UCLA Law Review and the California Law Review and the Cornell Law Review and many others. He is an editorial board member of the Law and Society Review. And as you know, this is the course he taught, Constitutional Law 2, Fourth Amendment, Employment Discrimination, Equal Protections and Administration Law and Family Law, Personal life, Ralph Richard Banks lives with his wife, Jennifer L. Burr, I think her name is Jennifer Albert, a prominent social psychologist, Stanford University faculty members, and McCarl Grant awardee, and their the three, I mean, and their three children, Everett, Ebby, or Ebel, and Harold, in the San Francisco Bay Area. If I butcher those names, I apologize. Um, uh, let me see. Let me see if there's a picture of his wife. Um, and she's like a year younger than Banks, ironically. Let's take a look. Because they said the man was married, so. Oh, it's a lovely wife. Wonderful. Okay. So, we'll continue on. You know, I've noticed with a lot, a lot of these intellects. His wife is a sociologist and a psychologist. 
Is it ironic that when they talk about these degrees black women hold, I would have to be dead honest that yeah, most black women do have the degrees in psychology. I know a few people on social media um, that I come across that have went to school and some have got psychology degrees. Now, is it wise to marry a woman that has a psychology degree? You might have to be careful with that because, you know, they are willing to really understand how you think and move psychology. So be aware of it. They could be use it as a weapon towards you. If you're not careful as a man, if you're not using your right thinking, you're not using critical thinking, common sense, when you're around people that has psych degrees. So I remember one brother said that he think that a woman wrote this book for him, uh, which I would say is possible, but we just don't know. But that's Ralph Richard Banks. That's the background for him. I was one back in... Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dave. And I always let me put this here. My good friend, um, short Chanel Shalom. I hope she's feeling better. Hope you're feeling better, Queen, as you're listening in. Oh, one thing. I forgot. Um, I always forget to do this, but I don't really keep... This in mind. So, what is the purpose of discussing this? Well, for those that's listening, this man has brought some buzz in regards to the situation of Kamisha. I think her name is Kamisha Jackson, and her being in the Supreme Court, but she has a, a track record of not only mishandling certain cases in regards to dealing with, I guess, children. Abuse Chira stuff. But as a lot of things in her closet that is very suspect that she's not even worthy for the seat, regardless she's black, from what I'm hearing now. But like I said, most of that's in high positions of office. They know who they're picking and selecting to be in these seats, mind you. You just don't get to that position. They they have to sit there, scan you thoroughly. Know what your background is, what you've done. And if you're doing something more in favor for them, making more money and hurting others, mm, as a high possibility, you do it real good, you could probably find yourself in a good position being in the seat of certain high elective um, offices. That's how this thing is played. That's how that jump works, people. Um, so, and much, I didn't even know content with her about her because, like, like most content creators, I sit back and see what's going on and engage the conversation. Oh, that's good. Very good. So, like I said, um, I did not recover content on that because I did not see the value of it till now. And maybe I might do content. I don't know. We'll see. But overall, let's be honest, people. That Mr. Banks has come back because he needs to insert himself to reinforce this notion that the black woman should not only explore the options, but explore options to a certain set of men. And he's not giving real factual data. Some that really we need to question of this inadequacy of the black male that becomes black men. So we're going to look into this article itself. And before I do that, I'm going to probably drop the link for those that have opposing views. And I want to hear, I want to hear the conversation. I would like to have the conversation. I'll do my best, best can of how I'm going to give my rationale if y'all decide to come up, men and woman, about is this a good thing, a bad thing? And like I said before, I'm not in the business of telling people what to do. Much as I don't advocate some things our people should be doing anyway. I don't advocate interracialism. I think it's counterproductive for black people, especially here in the West, because it doesn't gain us something. It doesn't better our status. It doesn't better us as people in this whole, as a race, in this racist society. These people look at you as niggas still, and they're going to keep operating and treat you like niggas, regardless if you're blue, black, light brown, or even light skin. 
their history has shown a track record of this, and they could continue to do it until you have become fully white, meaning not only in phenotype, but also the skin tone and the hair and all that stuff. You have to be genetically white, recessive. Anything less than that is considered uncivilized to these people. They look at us uncivilized. They're going to continue with name calling. They're going to continue oppressing with certain parts or aspects of their system. And they might even take the coochie from you. So now, let us look into this article, what Mr. Banks has put out. And I'm probably going to give my own little snippets. Where is it? All right. I'm going to look and see if I got it on both ends. Let me see if it's posting up. It's kind of slow down right now. All right, it's coming up. So now, it says here, why more black women should consider marrying white men? This is by Ralph Richard X. And this posted back in April. I think this came out in um, Friday. Two of the most powerful positions in the United States government will soon be held for the first time by black women, Kamala Harris and Kajitma Brown Jackson, or Katima, I found a pronouncing Katima Brown Jackson, I'm getting tongue tied. Harris, as we all know, is the vice president of the United States, and Brown Jackson could soon become Supreme Court justice. Now, I'm not sure if she became yet, but okay. Oh, let me remove this because I don't want this in the way from what y'all seeing. I apologize. But Harris and Brown Jackson. I read already, already. Oh, okay. I see. But Harris and Brown and Jackson also share a personal attribute that is equally noteworthy. Each has a white husband. The fact is significant. The efforts of racism has left well-educated black women with a, what it called, placidity of black male partners, or Polissa. According to Brookings Institute data, black men are less likely than black women to have complete high school and 50% less likely to have attended a four-year college degree. Now, let's stop right there. Oh, what's, he, what's good, bro? Um, I'm not sure how old this data is, but last time I checked, I think most black men now are starting to finish high school and entering college because you can't enter college without finishing high school unless they're getting their GEDs and still getting what they need just to go to college. Now, mind you, college is not a proponent that you're going to be better in the society. It gives you something of some clout, depending on what university you go to and what education, meaning degree you 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 gotten, maybe. But overall, as something to be more perpetually in the society as a black person, no. Because this society now is moving more into holding and protecting each other more than ever in this uncertain economy. They're not in the business of saving niggas. And one thing I found by Mr. Johnson, that he did some short research on this thing about black women having um, started these business, black owned business, and they start business at a high rate. And I always ask the question that no one has ever answered this fucking question, including they ask these same stupid women this question, what black business you women are creating? That is really represented and sustainable. That is a necessity for society. I wait, and they gotta be more business, not these small little piggy part business. I mean, what actually is you have created that is a necessity for society that a man needs? If you can answer this question, then we can have this conversation. But let's move on. Yet, despite the shortage of suitable black partners, black women have also been the least likely of any minority group to marry outside of their race, according to data from Rather Than Partners 
with men of other races. Many heterosexual black women efforts don't marry or marry black men with whom they are not especially well matched. Now, we're going to have to stop right here. And I'm going to say something that's going to ruffle some feathers. With the homosexual agenda here in America, can we know that there are some men that are engaged in little um, homosexual beha behaviors as well. There's a lot of women, especially sisters, that's entertaining licky licky acts, having carpet muncher um, ways with other women. So when this article talks about heterosexual black women, I have to question that. Meaning to say, which black woman you know today, if you ask them honestly, has ever kissed a girl? Has ever ate a girl's pussy? Oh, wait. And this is a question I want the brothers to ask every woman that's quote unquote said they're heterosexual. Because, and let's be honest, when you hear most of your content craze, and I, I'm going to keep real with y'all. A lot of y'all kind of crazy. They would like to talk about the male side about this thing about the black males doing bussy pops on this nonsense. But we don't talk about the homosexual or by curious of these ladies doing licky licky acts. The only reason why homosexuality is taboo in the black community because we're very much messed up mentally and confused. So if you're going to talk about one side, you got to also point two fingers at yourself. Because there's no way in hell I could actually find any woman if they said they're heterosexual. You should not be having what they consider a gay friend. Rather the same sex or opposite sex. You're straight, you're straight. You're never going to find no man, a black man, say he has a gay friend that's the same sex as him. It's not that. I'm not saying it don't exist, but it's very rare. Unless that man is gay himself. So like I said, we got to question the, the heterosexual black woman piece in this article. Let's continue. Um, well, let me make sure. Okay. I was going to make sure everything's good. Um, okay. And these mismatched relationships contribute to African American having the highest divorce rate of any racial group. In fact, black women are the only demographics to have a higher divorce rate than married marriage rate. Now, you must understand the number one reason why people divorce, especially talking black people, is lack of compatibility. It is not finance and it's not infidelity. Infidelity is second on the list. And the third is finance, money. Because you have money, you, it's not no guarantee you're going, U.S. woman, going to stay with that man. Now, there's data out here now showing that if the man is over 100K or let's say better, quarter million dollars or more, his chances of divorcing said woman is 25%. That still leaves you that extra 25. A quarter. Now we could flip it and say one in four black women will get married. That's a quarter, right? So there's still a chance that you are going to still be divorced. It's not as high as 50%, like a like flip of, of a quarter. But once you're still touching roughly in the 20s, it's still up there. Now, a lot of people say 25% is irrelevant. Yes, it is irrelevant. Because really, the, the, the benchmark number you want, which is the sweet spot you're looking for, is roughly 10%. But like in most in nature and a lot of things, it's hard to achieve 10%. Hell, you can't achieve black people getting together at 10%. So if it's hard to attain that percentage, by default, that is the sweet spot you want to see in all aspects to be. When we look at if we are on the good side or we're doing a good thing or we're on track in regards that it hurts us the most. If it's under 10%, you're on the sweet spot. And I know some people will not steal this, but I post it out here if anybody catches live stream. If anybody said a sweet spot for anybody that's saying that what we're doing bad and it's too high, that it's perfect, it's 10%, they got it from Chaos Rain. Mark my word. Let's keep going. 
Um, rather than partner with men of other races, many has okay. I think rather right, right, okay. Let's go down. Um, a bit more than a decade ago, I published a book as Marriage for White People. And a side note, if y'all want to read his actual book, um, you could do so if you get it for cheap. I'll find other means to get that actual book to see what's on it. I'm waiting for the old man to do some content thoroughly on this because he asked some real legit questions, which I can't say on this, this stream here. But once he does that live stream, be ready for that. Um, Let's look. Hold on, guys. I'm just looking at something right now. Come on. Hmm. Hmm. All right, um, I'm just checking my message. Let's see. Let's move forward. And let me check, make sure everything's okay. And the, 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 and the um, is marriage for white people. They examine the decline of marriage across American society, and especially among African Americans, and focus in on particularly on the pre uh, what they call pre decement of black women. The book raises the possibility that black women like Harris Brown Jackson would do well to open themselves to partners with men who are not black. After all, black men appear to have no problem marrying out. The same few report revealed they are twice as likely as black women to have a non black spouse. Now, the problem is with Mr. Banks, we never asked why, and I might know, but no person that writes articles like this asks the question, why would a said black man go outside his race and marry a said non-black woman? Because I want to ask questions, why? I just don't want to say, well, it is what it is. No, I want to know the purpose, the reason why would you go and marry someone that's not part of your race. That will fulfill why you see the marriage rate between black men and non-black women spike from over 30%. And trust me, other groups of women have no problem getting on a man if they make their minds right and just decide to seek out a man. And like this, our culture, us as race, we do things like backwardsness. We don't seek the importance of you know, pair bonding or, you know, sticking out as, say, as relationships or partners or, you know, married couples, unfortunately, in today's world. 50 years ago, no problem. But say, totally different. My book generated considerable controversy and exposed issues within Black America. While younger people appear more open to interracial relationships, which, you know, that's a possibility now because we are now Roughly 50, almost 87 years after um, what they call integration. So you find now, now we're approaching almost six years in it, that each generation does things different from the previous generation. A black woman old enough to be my mother made a point of telling me that I was a disgrace to my race. Interesting. But the most significant issues was between black men and women. While some black women were made uncomfortable by the book, which, you know, is possible, which is not a surprise, and the way it puts them in the spotlight, 
Many other embraced its message of empowerment. That was a message that not all black men want to hear. At one of my book talks in Washington, D.C., I worried a fight would break out between a young black woman who assert her right to choose whatever day or whatever type of man she wants and an older black men who condemns such sentiments as betraying the race. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Wait, I have somebody in the back. I'm bringing up now, brother. Um, <clears throat> hold on a second. Hello? Hey, what's up? Can you hear me? What's going on, bro? Chaos? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can you good. Hello? Very good. What's good? What's good? You're the what's first guy on? that came up. No, normally I wait until up, after bro? what's good. Um, I go through. Actually, let me finish this now and I get your take. It's only a few more paragraphs. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. All right. So as y'all know, um, let me go now. I think I lost where I was at. Uh, okay. Other other critics, including some black women, contend that white racism produced black women from finding non-black partners. And this convinced many black women that they cannot or should not partner with a non-black man, even if the alternate was remain unpartner or in a bad relationship. As a result, many black women feel that they should marry down before they marry out. Hmm. Now, I think I remember this one. This, I think she's a British actor. Let's keep going. Um, I explained in the book why black women should not be pressured to sacrifice their own chance for happiness out of some misplaced loyalty to black men. Nor should black women feel behold to black men under the guise of advancing the race. If the price of racial solidarity is a bad intimate part relationship, then the cost is too high. Black women should not be held hostage to the struggles of black men. True race can provide a basis of compatibility, but race itself cannot solely sustain a relationship. And there are many bias of compatibility other than race. Black women increase rate of interracial marriage from mere 3% in 1980 to 12% in 2017. So that's roughly 37 years. According to the Pew Research Center, also reflected their increased autonomy of choices partners that best serve them. They should not have to apologize or feel guilty for doing so. And there has been little discussion in the media or culture about the white partners of prominent black women like Harris, Brown, Jackson, and I hope this reflects the increased societal acceptance of such unions. If so, then black women will be able to enjoy the relationship freedom and deserve. And it's by Ralph Richard Banks, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, that's the article. Um, oh, what's good, JT? Um, I'm not really impressed, to be honest with you. All I saw was pictures of a few Caucasian, non-black men. And some of them, from what I'm looking, I think one's a billionaire. Some of them, one is a millionaire. I'm not sure what the other dude his status is from Kamisha Jackson. But if this is what they said, proof of their options, uh, I don't see it. it and it's talking about this, it jumped from 3% back in the 80s now to 12%, which, like I said, that's an increase. But still, my question I always ask people is what age and are these women marrying these men in certain groups or they find them from some other parking lot? Because there are some sisters that are attained non-black men. Trust me, they are. Because I did other content with the help of Mr. Sperling and Mr. Igmore when they did a little data about these extra 1.2 million babies that's amongst our women than the men. But every other racial group of men has more children than their women, except us. So some questions have to be, and mind you, that article, that data was roughly almost now six years old. So it makes me want to say, when they tell me I say these women are being chastised and being hold, behold to the race. And from what I'm looking now, if I really examine that, you're still messing around 
and these men are not married. And the ones that do marry, they probably are less quality, less adequate, and they probably have no options. So I leave it for anybody to come up now. I did my rant. So Mr. Super Mike, what's your take on this? Hey, what's going on, brother? Chaos. What's good? No, what's I'm good? glad to uh, be on your show, man. It's a good show. Uh, this mm -hmm. is a popular article. Uh, they resurrected this old dead horse from, what, 11 years ago? This man came out with his book. Well, his book came out, actually, now it's been a, a decade now. It came out in 2012. <laughs> was, yeah. All right. So, yeah. It's like, this is, this is the, this is my take. Mm -hmm. I mean, I see we it's popular now because uh, a lot of work in the last 10 years have been uh, put in by the feminists and by, you know, people to kind of highlight all the negatives, you mm -hmm. know, of, of black men or something. They want to see because when they say date out, they're really just trying to tell black women to run and beg for white men. They're not saying really get anyone else. They're just saying get white men because mm -hmm. for some reason, somebody's got an agenda somewhere that white men should have an easier time getting black women. They should, they don't okay. want to have to be a billionaire like, uh, you know, George Lucas just to get Melody Hobson or, you know, some of these guys that's getting Katanji and everything. Because the thing is, you know, of course, there's some some uh, interracial couples that do pretty good and, you know, they're living a happy life. But mm -hmm. after 400 years uh, total, 150 years free, it ain't working. It ain't happening. You know, white men just don't have a good, easy access to black women because it's something going on with that. I mean, we've been living with them all this time. Now, why do mm -hmm. black men probably uh, date out more? I mean, I don't, my, me personally, I don't approve of it. Me personally, mm -hmm. because I am a pro-black person. I, yeah. I tend to be pro-black, I'll say it that way. And, uh, but the thing is, you know, it's just, that's the nature of just men and females. The man, the man kind of dictates the terms of relationships, kind of when he's in the relationship and women tend to kind of, you know, kind of conform to that man usually. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's hard for, I guess it's probably, uh, so it's easier for men maybe to go out and date and stuff like that. Women, they have a whole nother set of, uh, keys. And I don't mm -hmm. think, and that's just this is my take on it. So, they keep trying to push black women to date white men. And then we, we hear content creators and not like you said, the divestment crew has gotten their leadership going and they're kind of like a little force now. And, you know, the all the, the hate black men crew kind of more organized nowadays than they were 10 years ago. So, you know, this uh, this guy's got a little little help. But it, mm -hmm. I don't really. And my thing is, if they want to go out there and, and if they do want to do slave play and all that kind of stuff, that's, if that's what they float their boat, man. I don't, you know, mm -hmm. go out there. But I know so many women, black women, who have dated white men and they just do not prefer. They have actually tried white men. So it's not like they haven't had a chance, you know. So it obviously it just doesn't work. <laughs> That's um, my thing. Um, going back and forth, um, Super Mike, is that mm -hmm. women are going to do what they're going to do, and the right. issue why a lot, a lot of other groups, coach men, what they doing, what they trying to do, and what they have successfully done, is they're punking other men, and by the women saying, if you go to side, not only I'm gonna cut you out, but you will not have no more access to anything I do. Mm -hmm. And see, the problem with our society, especially us as a group here, is we never done that yet. But the times have changed. You get me? Right. I mean, I know a few mm -hmm. countries advocate and say if these women decide to go date out and have these babies, that they should not come back. Right. 
But right. the problem right. with that notion is you could set boundaries on that, but what community they're going to go to, where they can go. You get me? Mm -hmm. Right. There's no set community for these mixed babies from black women, especially, or just any man, man with biracial children. They didn't go that said, this is them. They go over there. They have to come back to black community because they set up society for that. You get mm -hmm. me? Right. And the reason why I said, because remember these other groups of people, they want to keep the money to themselves. They use us right. as the strings to fill them up by getting our intellect and our dollar bills back to them tenfold. Right. So they right. can't afford to sit there, go and intermingle with us to start flipping the money back over here. Right. So when you're talking about say you go to, you're going to be better mobile with some more resource. I don't see no resource. You're going to be better with this caucus or man. Because even a white man, from if we look going by a data, it's not doing very well either. Right. See, the I mean, just look at like this. Like, look at Melody Hobson and George Lucas. You see mm -hmm. Melody Hobson and George Lucas right there, right? Yeah, I see that. You know, I, 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 this, this is so interesting. You know, she's already rich. She's an accountant. She's smart. She's super smart. Um, but mm -hmm. she was dating him, right? And he's a billionaire. Yeah. He's got Star Wars. You know, yeah. he's got all contracts with Disney. You know, okay. super rich. Yeah. No children. Really? No children with her. These, these two don't no. got no children. They bro, don't have children together. Bro, bro, you just drop it down. Now look it up, make sure I'm right. But no, look it up, make sure I'm right. But guess what? Guess all what? Right. I know me, this for a fact. Let me, let me, but, me check it now. But but George Lucas. But and I know I know they don't have any children, but just you know, just to be extra another layer, because I don't tell nobody to believe me. Look that up, you know what I'm saying? But also here's another fact. He could not marry her her until he sold the rights to Star Wars to Disney. Mm -hmm. You know, he you know they were they were together for a long time. Mm -hmm. But he would never marry her. And then once he wanted to just go ahead and marry her, no, you know, just whatever cuz obviously he loved her or whatever. He was like, you know, then you hear the the con uh, all rights to to uh, Star Wars franchise tries mm -hmm. went to Disney and then he married mm -hmm. her. See mm -hmm. and so <laughs> and, and what, what that tells it? me mm -hmm. go ahead. It, what, it says that they got some kids um Jeff Lucas, Caden Lucas, Amanda Lucas, but they look pretty white bro. Are I'm they from sure. her? I yeah they're not from her though. I mean, one possibly. Yeah, that's but what I'm, I'm, saying, I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I'm looking good. I don't, I don't see it now. Mind you, when you when you come when you know most parents that come from virus stock, especially if it's from the black female, they're gonna have some form of black mm -hmm. ad mi mixture. And I'm looking closely. I don't see it. Right, and she's very dark. You know, Melody yeah. Hobson. She's she's very dark. She's a real yeah. uh, beautiful chocolate sister. You know what I'm saying? And the thing is, yes. So. She, those children, you you wouldn't have any problem, you know, <laughs> telling if they were from her. But that even if they're the adopted ones, you know, if they have some adopted or maybe he has some children prior, you know, then the legacy is going to go to, to those children. You see what I'm saying? But also her legacy is going to those children, just like Michael Jackson, just like, mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of people. This is what they want, because what they're I, you know, just like you were talking about, they don't do anything for no reason. They've been pushing, <laughs> they've been pushing this inner, you know, the thing about investment, right? Yeah. Like if you're going to invest in, and you're going to win in the stock market, you got to yeah. find a, a stock that's low and buy it while it's low. When nobody yeah. else thinks that it's going to do anything. Everybody else think, oh, it's low right now. They're doing bad. But you know something that a lot of other folks don't know. And that's how it is with black people in America. You know, we, we're probably one of the most undervalued stock in the world. It's yeah. because for, for all this time, they had the chance to steal all our inventions for hundreds of years and uh, kind of 
kind of kind of push us down a little bit, hide our history and stuff. Yeah. But now their their numbers are going low, and they don't have the the population to keep pushing us down. So here we go. You starting to see, you know, Master P coming out doing what he do with his businesses, E forty doing stuff what he's do with his businesses. You are seeing a lot of, um, you know, black people doing more successful. And even regular black people that you don't know, you know, just average per people are running biz doing business, little small businesses and stuff, but they're doing business. Yeah. You know, but, and so it's like, okay, here's the time right now. We got it just like with Serena, Venus and Serena, you know, yeah. uh, Serena worth $160 million and she marries a white man worth 5 million. I mean, he's, that's a, if you say that's a good match, but who's who's doing who's who's going to get the money out of the deal? But you, you got to understand, um, Sir Mike. I'm be honest with you. A time mm-hmm. woman that is well making a whole lot of money. The only option is they're going to have to marry down because you reach the pinnacle of heights, which really a man that's a man thing. When you do as a woman, right? There's no anybody on the top heights looking for you. Now we can make an right. exception that Rihanna, Rihanna could have been one of them. You see, Rihanna didn't you see Rihanna exactly. She she, she 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 didn't want to marry that billionaire Arab boy for whatever mm-hmm. reason. There's reason for that. So you know who she married? The same another reason, probably the same uh, reason Janet. She, 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 she married a man that's from her home island, Barbados. Mm-hmm. Smart. I did Smart. content on that, and you gotta check it out because I did a little back check of ASAP Rock, Rocky. Mm-hmm. And yeah, she he, he's originally um his parents from Barbados. Okay, smart. So so she marries yeah, it's, and it's not married now. A cultural group. Mm-hmm, yeah. Exactly. And that's what the thing that's the, the the confusion that these type of women who they're targeting that they, they got this confusion and that's mm-hmm. what I mean by like, you know, they got they had a chance to kind of confuse us for a long time is that we actually think that especially women, they think that money or even your education, it Mm -hmm. actually makes you like actually better. You know what I'm saying? That, and that's the confusion that these people actually believe just because they have a college degree or they have some business or some money that they're actually better than someone maybe who just does not have those things as much as you. Yeah. And that's, they, they're using the wrong metrics, you know, because, you know, that, you know, they're not looking at the right metrics and that's the problem. And that's the reason why these people are, you know, I don't care. They can go over there if that's what they feel like, but they're not going to be satisfied. And that's the reason why just like, Oh, we're talking about the sister that, uh, had the uh you know she won the lottery and she got all that money and she kept bailing her old boyfriend out he was kind of dusty right well you know she's, 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 for the streets. She's, she's for the streets my dude see anytime when a woman does some dumb shit like that right right see, that's what i'm saying so that's what she is comfortable with exactly she's from the street yeah yeah <laughs> i know i know one particular concrete said that certain men are for the streets but say, but a whole lot mm-hmm. of females today, man, for the behavior activity, I have to say, is really for the streets type behavior. Exactly. So that's, I mean, what that's what's so funny to me. That's yeah. funny to me. Yeah, they, they think they better than somebody, but they just the same. They, ain't nobody perfect over here, you know? <laughs> and, and I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you, bro. The only perfection in the eyes of a lot of black women is this non-black man it's caucasoid man because they have the see, dream yeah, right. of a white perfection see when they mm-hmm. look at their black skin and then everything that composed of their blackness they look at it as inferior mm-hmm. less than see? evil i talked about this right. two years ago i said black is bad black is evil it will never get no attention because of something that black people subconsciously don't want to really have that conversation or really think about overall you know, mm. that if this is the epitome of beauty, holiness, righteousness, and right. God-like, what that makes your black ass? You think right. that God wants to fuck the devil? Really? 
But yeah. you had to think people that they, they create good and evil and they propose you and point the fingers as you as a black person, said person, as the component and the essence of evil. See? You're talking too pro black the... now. <laughs> I mean, well, yeah, 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 because let's be honest. I know, I know what you said. I, black I is bad, black is you, 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 remember, you remember the old speech? You remember the old speech that um, Martin Luther King used to have when he said when he looks at the cinnamons and the definition of black, it's everything bad. Devil's cake, right. everything black and evil. And that mm-hmm. was over 53 years ago. Actually, not 54 years ago right. when, he, when he read was mm-hmm. and did a lecture on it. And people today, black people look at and think of themselves, you are the epitome of evil. So the best thing right. to get out of evil, you must go find and seek God and to hope that you have intercourse with God, that he will wash away your evil by diluting this. But chaos, but chaos. Thing. Let me ask you this. Yeah. Chaos. Yeah. Tell me, how does God look? How do we know how God looks? Oh, that's simple. They put the image for the where? church. How? No, they gave you the image oh, of God. Where? It's on the wall? Yes. The walls, yes, yes, yes. This is the, the camera on the wall. Actually, through here, you know, one touches heart. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. gave the image of God. That's unfortunately. Right. And That's if they keep, and who does say that there's no image? Of course, it is. If there was no image, why think they keep painting a picture of what God is? That's right. Exactly. But he should have an image. The you say that's God. God. He's all mine. That's it. You should. Not, you should not really. They even put on it on it. good times. Just so you could see it, to make sure you've seen it. The oh, I mean that. God. Is it going to be that. the black Jesus or is it the white Jesus? I grew up with white Jesus, and that's the only Jesus good enough for me. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And we it, think we deep. laugh at that. Some of us laugh at that because we had the blessing to have a parent that had, you know, let us learn some common sense, or maybe we came across some people. And we had the blessing to be, you know, a little bit of free thinker or whatever. But you got to realize how many millions of people said, oh, I ain't listening to that old black Jesus stuff. Or I ain't listening to no alternate uh, conversation. That's whole stuff or that's old poor black stuff. I ain't listening to that. Now, true enough, you might not believe it. It might be it might be stupid because I ain't gonna lie. It's a lot of stuff that people talk who my Johnson is. Oh, uh, over there, uh, some of these other channels, they be talking some crazy stuff. But it's like, it's like, is it going to hurt you to listen to it and verify that it's crazy? Like, are you free thinking enough where you can hear something and then you mm-hmm. can just decide for yourself? Or are you scared to even hear it? Because there's a lot of people that's scared to hear stuff. Oh, no, no, I can't read that. That's the devil. Uh uh-uh. uh. I can't, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah, so that's 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 that image is still stuck in people's heads. You know, that image of that white, you know, face and all of the so called goodness that comes to it. And it's just like I don't know if you remember when sometimes a boy would uh talk about a girl or maybe he'd hit a girl or tease a girl just because he liked her and then uh just so he just so he'll stop teasing her. She'll probably, you know, talk to him. <laughs> and then he'll right, have Sir a Mike. chance with her. Mm-hmm. So, Mike, I got one of my good friends on the line. I'm going to ask a question. Oh, go ahead. Hey, w- yep. Welcome, Terrence, on the Cast Ring channel. Everybody see. <laughs> um, Terrence, you remember the lady that they, they're trying to point in Supreme Court, just a black woman? I think her name is Jackson Kam- Kamisha. No, I, don't, I don't remember. Okay. Well, th- there's a... a Older gentleman, he, I think he's the same age as you. He wrote a paper on the New York Post about and uh, it's titled, and you never read it, but I'm not gonna go back and read it to you, but I'll give you a scenario of what it is about. He wrote this article saying why more black women should consider marrying white men. Why they should what? Why sh- black women should consider marrying white men. Should consider. <laughs> And this man wrote a book say is marriage for white people. Ten years um, almost a decade ago. And this man is a Harvard, um, he's a Stanford Law graduate, but he doesn't know nothing about social psychology, sociology degree, anything. Really doesn't matter, but 
but let's say for the sake of conversation that it will that he wrote a book and saying that how black men are inadequate, that black women waste their time with black men, that they should explore options and leave black men, no matter what status he is. It's funny he say that with all these white women running after the brothers with money, but we inadequate to them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, 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 but Terrence, they, they said that black men are inadequate, and they said the, the reason why we have a high divorce rate is they said deal with money. But when I did a video, and, and uh, if you, I'm not sure how long, how long have you been subscribed to my channel, um, Super Mike? Just for clarity. Oh, I mean, I've probably been uh, subscribed for about two, three months. All right. I did I did another content to really solve the divorce rate in America. And I did a little Google search. And what I found that was telling the real reason for divorce in America. You always hear them talk about says finance, infidelity. No, infidelity is second on the list. The top is um, what do you call irreconcilable differences, incompatibility. Mm-hmm. Why a woman will file for divorce? Right. And I found and I was trying I mean, to look another article. At- I was looking at another article to see if that was whole weight. And another article said almost the same thing. And I'm not sure if I have the links on my video on it. I can't post it here because. It's something I did last year, right? Mm-hmm. But the point is this. Oh, so how long ago? Take you know, you, I think you got to be on Facebook. You could share it on my, uh, I got my yeah, Facebook I'll, page I'll do, too. I'll, I'll do that. I'll do that. The point is this: that this man is posing as his evidence that is money. Why, you know, black women are divorcing black men. But so funny. The, Funny, it, 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 funny man. Got a white one, got a white wife. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Robert Smith, the guy who paid Tuskegee graduating class to go tuition. Oh yeah, yeah, I know that. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, but I don't know. I mean, she. I don't know because I mean I know she's white compared to today's standards of of white now and black, but I, she don't look all the mm-hmm. way white because you know, you know mm-hmm. how, how it is. The little one drop rule. It looks like she got something in there. I'll say it that way. Oh, if, she, if she's Spanish, most likely she's going far more on the white side here in America. Now, if she's mixed, well, yeah. very, very, very rare. But for the sake of conversation, that most most men, depending on the economic situation or if they're once married and divorced, if he's doing very well, obviously, our next person that's going to probably step up that wants to get, get him is possibly maybe a non-black woman. But it goes to show that in the society, and I had to agree with the old man, that you're not guaranteed a mate. You got to do something to guarantee the man that you seek for, that you possibly want, and put yourself in the best position. Just because you're a woman with a pussy doesn't guarantee that a man's going to take you on long term in marriage. Hell, some of us dudes are not guaranteed to find a woman that we want and say we're going to take them as wives. You get me? So what, why the rule has applied for you differently? Because you're a woman? No. The world works and operates the same way. You about to say some Terrence? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So so a lot of women live in this fairy tale world because America gives the illusion of this fairy tale to a lot of sisters that you're entitled to a man. You just come as you are. That's good. Enough. Well, another thing too though. Uh, well, another <laughs> thing too though is they they found out from learning our history, like you know, it's so funny. I'm I'm about to do a video on this because I've been looking oh, at good. like Ivy Wells and all the old history and stuff. But like, you know, like way back in the day, you know, mm-hmm. our like we used to have, you know, we we was always married and stuff. We was always you know connected and stuff for a long time. And they realized that like that was like they had to break that up, that marriage thing. Because they was going through, you know, that women's lib and all that kind of women's mu- movements and stuff from them. But mm-hmm. black black people, we didn't have no women move. Our women wasn't fighting us at, back in the day. Our women really awesome. wasn't fighting us. You know, what I'm saying back in the, back in back in the day, I'll say it like that. So white men at that time, they were going through all that kind of stuff with with their women were fighting them. So they had it. They feel like doing that to us. And I mean, I'm gonna go through the, the history on my thing, but yeah, that's 
that's a real thing. They had to set that up and they did a good job in setting that up. And because they were planning long term, they did do it pretty good. So that's all this is. This is just them, you know, driving a wedge. And all they did is just start. All they had to do is just give benefits to one. It's just like if you have two children, if you control the, the resources, you just give the, the dessert to one child for, for all their life. And the other child just got to go to bed after dinner. No dessert. And you do that forever. Oh, they're going to be fighting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's all they did. Oh, that's all they did. That's all they did. Because our women, like Ida B. Wells and all of them stuff, they they couldn't stand them white guys. They they was having a problem. So they was like, we got to turn this energy in in fight in fighting, and that's what they did. That's exactly what they did because the same ferocity that these women uh, get on panels and go hard against black men with, yep. That's the same way they was doing it way back in the day, going against the clan and stuff. And that didn't turn that against us. <laughs> That's all oh, this I is. Mm. That's all they did. And, and like I said, it's 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 pretty good. It's pretty smart how they did that. I didn't know that. Uh, well, like I said, you see, yeah. they, they always engage the environment to see where they're at and where we're at. And they always got to find ways to how we could um, apply more pressure to the Negroes. You get me? And one of the things they know is since we were married at a high rate up to the late 60s, it, it was evident because if you ha- if you marry and you're doing what you're supposed to do, your children do come out a little better. And not only that, you're not mm-hmm. able to consume a lot once you're married because the resources right. consolidate into one thing. And mm-hmm. and I tell you, if you remember there was a documentary on YouTube same way called How to Sell to Negro. They're watching the money, bro. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. See, people don't understand yeah, America. We're making money. They, they, they're well known say where the money is going in and going out. And black people have not learned say everything they do to you is always to find ways to get that dollar bill back to them. You work for yes. free in a way, but I need that money back. How can I do it? Well, we got right. to find who's See, some We're just person. learning that. We just now seeing that. We on a big scale, we're just now peeping that game. But see, they've been ahead of us, so you know. Of course, they're gonna know, you know, how to put trick us, you know, for a while. Yeah, they've been ahead of us for a long time, you know. So you, you know, we we thought, you know, we thought like, oh, you know, the law, and everything is good. Whoop de whoop, you know. If we just do the right thing, then yeah. it'll turn out right, you know. And and we didn't understand. We we couldn't think on that level like that. They would actually spend this much time with kind of setting setting us up as a group we we still there's still a lot of black people that can't believe that you know groups will literally plan on how to strategize on how to take your money your entire market share there's industry that would say okay we're going to get the black dollars this way like you said that video how to sell to the negro yeah. You know, we already was making shoes and having buses and all that kind of stuff, but you know, yeah. we wanted this we wanted to buy their stuff. <laughs> but remember, remember, fifty-four billion dollars back in the mid late fifties. I'm not sure how much equates to now. I think that's like a couple um almost a trillion or two. Am I right? Right, um Terrence mm-hmm. and some right? Because it was fifty four billion back then, you know, it's like a few trillions now in today's time. Right. Right. So right there, you know, when they talk about the reparations, which there's now ongoing talk now, that why now they talk about it now, and it, what who they really focus on, who they're gonna give it to, because anytime that they See. bring the conversation about reparations, they always got mm-hmm. put in other people, and it tells black people that you are not even worthy of them giving you what is right for yours and little subsidies, real um, reparations. You get me? They got to tie other That's people right. in because if they yeah. do that, now, let's be honest. The person why it's hard to, to for them to give it to black people because let's be honest, who are they gonna parasite over? See, who are they gonna suck <laughs> that? Exactly, you got it. You got it right there. They, That's yeah, the see, whole thing. you know what I'm saying? The whole purpose the, why they, why they feed everybody else and sucking blood for you because you are the um the the healthy host. The, they have to the, the yes. And after they deplete you, 
they move on to the next one. That's all it is. It's like you're the know? goose that keep giving. You're the like we're the we the goose that lay the golden egg. It's just like we just keep laying gold eggs. Oh, and it's like, dang, we ain't dried these people out yet. Damn. You know, and they, we just keep on, we just keep on. And we mm-hmm. we now they kind they've been kind of like scared. That's what people <laughs> like it's so crazy. It's so crazy when you start looking at the history because it's like you you see a lot of stuff. And I mean, mm-hmm. you know, different people are gonna have different takes on history, you know, just like anything else. But to me, yeah. when I look at it, I look at I see it like, look, these people was like, okay. In their mind, they was just going to use you real quick and just do the slave stuff. And uh, they thought they was going to run that forever. That didn't work. So they was like, okay, we got to let them go. Damn, you know. All right. So we don't really need them no more. And, you know, they had an argument about that because it was like, oh, yeah, we can still use them as workers. So we survived. But then now here here we is we growing twenty million people, forty million, fifty million people, you know, sixty million people possibly. That's a lot of people. That's nation. You can't just <laughs> we ain't going nowhere. You know what I'm saying? Even if we is crazy and, and dysfunctional and, and messed up. But their numbers is going down. So it's like just like when you're playing Street Fighter or something, it's like <laughs> You only got like a half a bit of life left, and time is about to run out. And this dude got full life. <laughs> who who gonna win? You getting desperate? So that's like what that's what we seeing. And like you said, we we talking about reparations, talking about giving. They're like, damn, you know, if we don't give them nothing, they just gonna take over positions and they're gonna give reparations to themselves anyway, eventually. So you well, know, eventually, it's more, it's much it's much deeper than that. If we kept on the tra- trajectory we we're going, um, to be honest with you, black people would probably run America in less than a century. We, well, we will, and they know that. That's the reason why they're so pushing. Oh, we need to get married to y'all. You know, what I'm saying we need to. Uh, no, see, see, they get pushed to to marry a, a certain set of black folks. Certain set of black it's, women, yeah. Certain. No, I mean just generally black people, general, it because they're right. trying to monogamate. And make what we call the tanning of America in the next thirty years. See, they'd be they'd be high schedule of bleaching out black folks in America. Right. That's why they had to speed it up. You're gonna see TV shows, commercials pushing black women and non-black mates. And like I said before, Super Mike, that either subpar mates, these sisters again. You get me? They talk about the, the subpar black men. They're not talking about these brads and stuff that they're messing with, or they get yeah, knocked they are up for right? real. You get 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 really racket, but think about it, think about it. If the European was doing so well, like they said, then obviously he would not be having issues with the country he's in now. You get me? Right. He's doing, but he's not doing that well. You know, you get me? See, people don't say yeah. once he does make certain amount of money or something doesn't go his way, what he does, he turns around either self delete himself or take everybody else out. Right. But, but you know what something? The real prominent black men that marry a white women, they really like they in a sense more pro black than the than most of the brothers who with sisters. Yeah, and I, I find that very weird. <laughs> There's I don't know why that is, but <laughs> I said, wait, you just now started to really take kind to people and being very pro black people person now because well, you're to not black. That's, it's a different I, mindset. See, that's what I was saying earlier. Like the reason why it's like it's so important for them to push the women to marry white men is because the man, the man kind of usually enfo- enforces a culture. It's just natural. So like, if, okay, like, okay, so if you got a, a black man that marries a white woman or any other culture woman, okay, mm-hmm. it's like in that house, that kid is going to look at black history they're going to listen to it and they're not going to be afraid of listening to it, even if they don't listen to it directly. They're going to, you know, it's just like that man's going to be comfortable and his his way is going to be comfortable. You see what I'm saying? But like if you get the white man in the marrying the black woman and he can coonify 
that kid. He can coonify that family because he's going to enforce his way. You see what I'm saying? And that's the reason why they do that because it's just it just statistically it's like if that if if it's like a man a white man a uh, black woman the kids usually grow up you know a little bit more uh, confused I'll say it that way okay. about their blackness and all that kind of thing I mean if you if you just think about the 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 the, uh, the biracials. I don't mm-hmm. know that you know. Like, look at Alicia Keys. You know, mm-hmm. she, her father is black. I mean, even, uh, I mean, I can't even just think of them off the top of my head. Yet, but yeah, you said Alicia Keys. Alicia Keys, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. it's just like if you just think about the the biracials that you know, most of the ones that's that that's that's you that try to like hide or hide their blackness or whatever mm-hmm. they usually their the father let's okay look at megan what's her name what's the Ma- Meghan Markle? married the prince megan Markle. yeah yeah, yeah. she's like oh no no i'm not black i'm not black but she her mother is com- com- purely obviously she's the mom's black but that I find daughter, mom like, no, yeah yeah somebody yeah yeah but just look at just look at it you can look at this you can do statistics just based upon just the folks that you would know, you would see that's what they're looking at. They're like, okay, if the if, if the man is white and we can get families out of that, then we can create this mulatto class that is detached from the black struggle. And that's why that book, the man was like, oh, you know, black women need to don't need to be thinking about the the what do you say the issues of the black man and tying themselves the black, to the, black yeah. 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 Like black women needlessly, you know, should divorce themselves from the issues that black men have. And this, and keep in mind, this is coming from a man that's married to a black woman with black children. Yeah. So it's a lot of these black people. It's a lot of these black people pushing this interracial dating stuff real strong. Most of the ones who pushing it is they all they they got black spouses. They they I don't really see too many pe- people going on the jihad for black women to marry white men who are actually married to a white man. I don't see it nowhere on public. The only people who really pushing that, even including the YouTube people, they're married mm-hmm. to black men, <laughs> or they're married to a black woman as a black man. It's so weird. Hmm. Have you noticed that? Um, yeah. The only thing I've noticed, to be fair, fair honest, is that if your mind is not right, your children are going to come fuck up. That's the end of the story. If the man's mind well, yeah, black that's, man's that's, that's right, obvious. And, and, and he's that's with a non black black woman, the child's going to come fuck up. Same thing. If a black woman's mind is fucked up and married to a so called non black man, same situation. And even if they, oh, their yeah, mind is right, if, if their mind is right and they're in these interracial relationships, I'm be honest with you, brother, and let, hear me good, is the children going to still come out fucked up overall. And here's why. Because they have to still deal with the world as is. They're not going to look at them as, say, you're this and that. You fall only one box. Because the one drop rule was designed by them to keep the so-called money in their circles. Right. It's not about racial purity. Not, I mean, European men, European women, or people of that's not race, they're never really f- in the business of talking about purity. That's an illusion. Right, right. That's such a period. Most majority of human beings in the earth have some form of ad mixer. Unless you're mm-hmm. like 99% of that's this a ad myth. Mi- yeah, you're right. That's a myth they just made up that purity stuff. Yeah. There's no I'm even when they talk about the, the so-called Aryan nation, Aryan race, and I say what yeah. percentage is that? If you ask the real yeah. deep question, what percent is this blade look for? Besides blue eyes and straight hair, there has to Who be a is genetic. One hundred percent. Show me what. Show me a hundred percent. One. Even of black that. people now are not even one hundred percent solely so-called black. Well, we didn't come up with that stuff. Like, that's 90 percent, mm-hmm. but never ever find one hundred percent. Don't exist. 
Yeah, but yeah, yeah exactly. But we didn't even come up with that, like a hundred percent and stuff. That's them. Mm -hmm. They came up with that. They yeah. came up with that one hundred percent and percentage of this. Mm -hmm. Oh, your percentage of that, a percentage of this. Like, like how can you tell uh, between a Nigerian and a uh, 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 somebody from the Congo? Uh, you, 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 ten percent Nigerian, and you thirty percent Congo, and you fourteen percent. Niger Congo or or whatever it is, uh, South African, like really? <laughs> oh yeah, they, they really? Comic with garbage. Yeah, man, come on, man. That's a percentage of stuff they just got set up to confuse us. And then you go do a different DNA test, it give you a totally different mix of percentages. <laughs> we swear by that stuff, boy. And they already tell you it's 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 a little guess. It's, I mean, it's, it's it's some science in it, but it's a little guess, man. It's just a little guess that they put on it. And then who names that stuff? Like, because the Nigerians didn't name that, you know. So it's like that hundred percent, this percentage, that, and all that. You know, the Christian Christian world is still big, even though it's dwindling. And the whole idea that you can take God and put it into an image. And create a subliminal permanent mark in somebody's consciousness. You know, it's like this Jesus thing, and you know, the white, you know, the God. The longer we see God's son as white, <laughs> mm. see, God's and it, son is white. That's the most subconscious stuff. Come on, man. And, I mean, but like nowadays, it's good. So many of us kind of understand that, but you gotta realize it's still thousands and thousands of people who, who didn't get that memo. Mm. Yeah, but they the younger generation it, so. we have really into to the Christianity, so the next generation or so, it's, it's pretty much two more generations and it's pretty much going to be dead. Yeah, and mm -hmm. that's what they're trying to get. That's exactly why they're pushing this marriage thing because they look at it just like, see, now we're starting to look at, we're starting to plan ahead like they are, and now they feel like they're feeling very scared now because it's like they used like way back in in the day in slavery times and stuff and even not even not just even in slavery just just a few years after slavery we was just trying to do what's right for us we were thinking about a, a few things but we wasn't planning the way they planned like you know 50 years later 160 years later 100 years setting up the great grandkids to be running everything and then now we like, oh, this is how they did it. Damn, way back in, I'm looking in 1870, they set this up for them and messed our stuff up so we wouldn't have the same thing. Okay, so this is what they did. And so now we're doing the same thing. And we're like, well, not all of us, but, you know, it's a, it's a growing number of us, you know, doing that, kind of looking into this stuff. And mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, they're like, dang, you know, we need to, because that's what they did. I think the Spanish people did that. They went down there uh, because, and uh, also they did it in India too. That's what they do. They'll, um, it's only that they come over there to conquer. They kill a lot of those men. And then what they do is then, okay, they, they get them women and, uh, you know, they had them mixed babies. And all they do is just start treating the, the, the mixed ones better than, then uh, they start treating this one better than that. And that's how they run it. And so the ones who get treated better, they feel better now. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They start feeling superior and then they, they run along with the game. They, be, they they go along with the plan because yeah, they've like, been like treated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lancados. That's what they call them, right? I, don't know I think that's what, that's what they call them. I think that's what they call them, Lancados. They mix, they go over there, they they start with the mix, just like Trevor Noah. You know, like if you look at Trevor Noah, I think his father is white. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, oh, right. Father, he, I didn't know that. His, That's why, okay. his father's white, but his mother is black. And okay. he, he had it, he, he, it was, it was a while before he started calling himself black. If you look at his career, like, when he came and started really working in the United States and 
realized that's how we do it. Like you black, we don't. Because he was like, I'm mixed. I'm a, I'm a, uh, what do you call it? I'm colored, whatever. I'm not black, you know. Yeah. And so, yeah, it, it took him a while, but he's still not really, he's not really into it that way. Because, like you said, you still got that loyalty to daddy. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the only one that's a little different was Bob Marley to me. Because his father's white, but I don't think, I think his father just dropped the seat and left. They, he was not around nowhere, no nothing. Yeah, not at all. So, yeah, so the mom just completely raised it. And so that that culture, you know, that that's a big deal for them. So I think that's what their plan was with this, uh, you know, and if that's, that's what they want to do, and then that's what they're going to do. So we'll have a bunch of that coming up in, in for the for our kids to deal with, but it's not going to be nothing that we ain't dealt with before. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it ain't no big deal. <laughs> they still, you know, they playing catch up now. So it's like, you know, it's like karma. That's what I'm looking at. <laughs> That's all it is. Yeah, I'm just but, looking at karma. Well, let, let, let's be honest here, guys. Um, that um, because man invests his time and energy, wrote this. I always think in the back of my, are you having any future books, Mister Banks? Because that yeah. book you wrote is now ten years old. You have not come up with no new material or anything that's up there or anything of irrelevance f- since the early twenty tens. And now because you're finding that certain things are trending throughout social media, that you know you want to insert yourself. So the way you have certain women that are swirl hopefuls or so called divest, mm-hmm. call, has some form of ammunition saying, you know, what makes you worthy? What I should still be around you, date you, or have your kids, whatever you call it. And really, right. truly, be honest with you, if you ask a dumb, shitty ass questions, I would advise maybe you should um, go over there. You know what I'm saying, and then if it goes well, I look at it. But, but if it goes bad, don't bring your black ass back. Yeah, that's how. Well, they gonna come back, and see, that's the thing. Well, you know, and, and that, that's a problem. And see, see, that's this what is, ends up happening because that's what ends up actually happening. Because, like I said, I know several who. I mean, that's what I said. Like we've been around here this thing for four hundred something years, man. There's plenty of opportunity. You know, this ain't no new idea. Mm-hmm. So it's not like. Nobody ain't had a chance. They had a chance. They had a chance to to go get them white men, and they have got white men, but they just use them for money. But it's just like they don't obviously, you know, they don't like staying with them. Obviously, most of them don't. I say it that way. Only a few stay. Mm-hmm. Just a few, and that's just how it is. I mean, like I said, they don't have. They had all this time to get them. Ain't nobody been really stopping them like and and the thing is, just realistically, like you say, they go over there and you know, they'd be like, Oh, Brad ain't all that. Um, you know what I'm saying? I really don't like Brad. Because I I so I hear you can go pull up YouTube a lot. It's so many women and be like, Yeah, I tried it. I mean, they get a whole YouTube videos on it. Yeah, I tried it. I never do that again. I mean, they'd be like, I would never. They'd be swearing up and down. So I don't know. I mean, but I guess you can pull up YouTube videos the other way too. Mm-hmm. Well, I never you, try to compare them. You're right. Because I've known sisters. It's, it's far more white women that stay with the black man than the black women mm-hmm. stay with the white man. But, right. but Terrence, I, what I'm hearing from a lot of these chicks, they be saying that, well, these white women are divorcing you too. So you even you going out, they're getting the same person, no different than what we're getting. And I'm thinking, say, well, if these non-black women are thinking like how you're thinking, then they would have a certain scarce mentality not dating no man at all. Or rough. We're right. gonna hold that as if it makes sense. But at the end of the day, women want a man. See, in society, what they train a lot of black people, especially a lot of sisters, is that you don't need a man. So what default, mm-hmm. what, what are you gonna get if you don't need a man? You get nothing. Exactly. You get like you say, carpet bunching and stuff, all that. 
Yeah. Yeah, but it, 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 it's highly and sexy promoted. Ain't no women are walking around here talking about they don't need no man. Unless the big fat ones that use the vibrator outside of them now. <laughs> <laughs> well, they all use that it's now. So. It's some fat girl talking about, Charlie, they don't know what they're doing because I can't get no organ. I said, sister, I done heard a whole bunch of women tell other women, quit using that motherfucker because when you get you a man, can't yeah. nobody, uh, you, you can't, Match I mean, come on. Stuff. You can't, you you can't mess yourself up. No, oh, they didn't. They don't know what they're doing. I'm like, no, they ain't attracted to your big fat ass. It's so. mm-hmm. Oh, you know, you know, as if she talked about that, um, Terrence, I remember, um, the old man that said this that one thing that Mr. Banks never talked about in his book or anything or regards or when talk, they explore the options that's saying you have to fit the fitness component. You can't be fat, big, in school, and not think you're going to sustain a whole man or get a man of any DC. Not about DC. Well, it's a, a lot of guys like fat women. It's a lot I mean, of well, I, 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 I will say this. The men that entertain a bigger woman, this is just my, mm-hmm. my experience. I know. Most like those who's not really doing anything productive, especially women that's way bigger than them. Okay, yeah, a, like you, uh, you're talking about way big now. Uh, well, no, 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 because think, yeah. think about it. fat, this goes away. Now, you look at most Wait, women, I guess people have a different definition of fat, so yeah, you're right. And, and, and think about this because we, li- we, li- we live in a fat nation, by default, mm-hmm. some of us are gonna be fat, depending on how we keep our health. Right. And who you, who you listen to now, this is Mr. Miller here, he deals with the health and the food. And like I said, mm-hmm. uh, like I said, Terrence, once he has the book. On the shelves, bring back to have more clarity and when do more dialogue on the book because people got to understand as a people, as race people, we cannot escape the 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 help part of our lives. In the times we're now, you can't afford to escape that out because what they have already lined up and what's already to come is that you're not got money to afford to keep your yourself in good health. It's already expensive yeah. already, and I hear even with the saying, and I'm not going detail because you know, you know, yeah. it's, it's touching over there. The that they 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 they're now looking at removing certain things off Medicaid. Now mm-hmm. you get me. So now say if they remove certain subsidies that you need just to get by, not survive but get by, mm-hmm. you're in trouble. Mm-hmm. Right. So now you're going to look and say what I'm doing wrong that's causing plaguing my disease. I'm going to have to go back, not natural pet, but I have to go to alternative and do things differently to maintain my health. And, I cannot eat and the same really food, the natural stuff. exercise, yep. and think that your body is going to sustain yourself in this Western diet and Western mm-hmm. world. It can't now. Right. You get the, me? The natural stuff is, you know, they call that alternative food, but it's actually the normal food like that we should be. You know, like, you remember, I don't know if you... I don't know if your grandmother, great grandmother, something like that. They always used to pride themselves. They always had some kind of plants growing in their house or some kind of garden growing. You know, the old men always pride themselves on cutting the grass and keeping the grass cut and keeping the garden right. It's because, our, you know, everybody grew food, but we don't do that. They done got uh, like, what, five, six, seven generations of us now. We don't know nothing. If, if a grocery store goes away, we don't know what to do. We're gonna die. <laughs> matter, matter, matter of fact, if you think about this, there's now a food shortage now. Yeah, exactly. That's what so, they're so doing. It, they, tells, they, it tells you if you live in cities or in rural areas and no one doesn't know the basics of that of survival, mm-hmm. you're in trouble. I mean, yeah, uh, exactly. you, you're familiar, you're familiar, right, Terrence? Right. They're now talking about the shortage. Terrence. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know what? That's short. It just that's, it sounds like theory to me because mm-hmm. I ain't seen nobody say they went to the store with no food in there. <laughs> so where's the shortage at? I mean, they, well, they got really yeah, fake. Yeah. What do you mean? What, what really is shortage? Because I saw they have an article talking about it, and they said it was going to be shortage. And I'm thinking, what do you mean? Can you define what the shortage? I mean, come on, because. Last my check, most of the food you have out here anyway is no good for your body anyway. Right. right. So if there's a shortage of this, are you really losing out? 
Are eating this shit? Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah because because ain't no alternative. Okay. Well, well let me ask you this here. What area what area you stay in? Hold on, hold on. Let, let Terrence talk. Go ahead, Terrence. That's the, it goes back to the thing with the, with the, you know, with the interracial thing. It's like they pulled our women into that educational institution and gave, gave them direction. And we dropped the ball because that should have been our duty to do that. Because all the areas, it's just a beautiful situation. All the areas in business where the most money can be made are things we can actually produce. But we choose mm-hmm. not to. Because even the men have got caught up in being a consumer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All, all our ancient civilizations, what nobody doing for us? Right. We were doing for us. But mm-hmm. complacency. Because mm. in Mississippi, we got so much that farming with the occupation, he just be poor. And I'm like, why? Because he come out high people struggle. I said, brother. He wasn't growing the food. That was the problem. You was the marketing. I said, your people, your grand, your, your your father and grandfather, they sold to a wholesaler out of the town where the food was growing from. And I realized that, wait a minute, if I keep the food right here where I produce it and sell it to all the people that I live around, I won't have no overhead. Right. I won't have to draw something. I don't have to buy no boxes. I don't have to yep. pay taxes. I can get the wholesale mm-hmm. price. And even though yep. I did it when I was down there, they still didn't get with it. That programming. Wow. What area? What area you at? Uh, what area you in? Like what city? Terrence. Well, Terrence, I think he asked you a question. Is that- USM in a town called Pedal next to Hattiesburg. That's like I mean, like what state is that? I mean, even now you got you got these black billionaires. Come on. So why we ain't got no textile? We spend so much on food, mm-hmm. you know, housing, furniture, mm-hmm. all the stuff we can produce yeah. ourselves. But for some reason, right. <laughs> well, the thing but is, you, that's why. I, I, well, like, I like, I, like I said, I, like like I said, I deal with most come on the East Coast. And then, and then we don't have a, and then so. the black men with money don't have the same mindset that the white men. See, they had, they took their money and put it through private foundations, and the private foundations finance the social structure so that they can thrive <laughs> in, in business. But we don't do that. I don't know nobody who got a private foundation where they take not for profit donations and use it for straight up black economic empowerment. Only person that's talking about that is Kanye. Jay Z ain't talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, smaller smaller people do stuff like that, but you won't hear about them, uh, and they get they get talked about bad. So I won't even mention them. But it's people doing stuff like that. But you're going, you, you know, we just got to realize that, you know, some of that stuff is it, we got to feel a little pain. We're a type of people that got to feel the pain first, and then we get on our game. I mean, my, my mother always impressed upon me my priorities, things that's most important in you sustaining your life. Food right. and clothes. Is not you broke up. From the south to the north. White folks in the north wouldn't build and shit. Mm-hmm. The south was further along than the north was at one time. But <laughs> that man said it's like, Cause they closed some of the facilities down in, in the Chicago area. We called a Dawson Skill Center where you can go and learn carpentry and plumbing. And oh yeah, 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 yeah. They did that all over, on purpose. You got, you got people like LeBron. You got all these niggas with this money. You can create a plethora of them, and and, and make it so bad you don't even have to pay for it because people can donate to you. You can take a part of your salary. It's, it's, it's tax deductible, so you would actually get a fifty percent break on people donating money to you. Oh wow! But we just, yeah. I mean, we just man, ain't there? We just. But it's we, like this. It's like this. This is how I, this is how I look at it. It, it. You know that us talking a lot of times too. We we put uh, 
we we don't give ourselves enough credit for like us having these conversations even on the internet uh it, it does create a certain impact and like if we multiply that stuff when, when we talk about something then it gives other people cover to come do it you know what i'm saying because if we keep putting that word out there and we spread that word somebody because it always starts off a bunch of talk and then somebody's gonna be like man i'm sick of talking let's get it done let's get it done and then people come in and do it but if nobody's keep if nobody's if people ain't pushing for that then it's like it's not going to give people that cover we like them white designing clothes right and even right. though and a few people came out with their own line of clothing that was just the design part the, the manufacturing and the production of the raw material is with them but we have the capability of doing it right hmm. but the complacency of this generation and the generation before that and the one before that we just we just so we don't know nothing about the farm you see it like they got us thinking that chicken nuggets just come from Kentucky Fried Chicken or something or the store. We don't have no idea of the farm. Like we don't know what where food actually come from. That's the reason why they got a whole nother group of people doing what we used to do. So because they don't want you to make that connection. Like we don't even care about no farm. Like it's farmers fighting for their land, black farmers and stuff, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you do a story on black farmers, ain't nobody watching that. Because, like, the people, a lot of people, we don't even know. We don't see it. We don't understand it. We don't understand yeah. the problem. And so well, see, that disconnect. You feel with that name, John Boy? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. See, that's what I mean by wrong direction. He's sitting here whining because Walmart don't want to buy his potatoes. Fuck Walmart. You got a whole bunch of black folks stay right around you. That's what I'm saying. The niggas would be farming in a black community and we'll skip them and, 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 and drive the food way some goddamn way else. Yeah. Right, right. You're right. Walmart. Time. Yeah. Fuck Walmart. Yeah. Uh, you think I'd be trying to sell to Walmart? Hell Never. Yeah. Hey, have you looked at this thing called B1 Ag? No. B1 uh, Ag uh, channel? Uh, have you ever heard of them? You know, you, you know do me a favor. Um, Super Mike, because I got some shut this down. Um, okay. anything like that, you could send from my Facebook or the back channel here, or you even drop okay. the link at the, at the end of this video. I'll look into right, it right. um, because anything that's recent, yeah. I have to look into it, but it sounds interesting. Um, but yeah, yeah it's, just a, it's just a YouTube channel, it's a YouTube right. channel, okay. Yeah. But do you have any closing remarks? Oh, no, no, this is you know, my my remarks is basically the same. You know, it was a good conversation. We did, you know, we we this ain't nothing new. It's just like I said, this agenda, and you know, we're just about solutions. I love our sisters, and you know, I hope they're happy. But I I say just don't go. If you want to go for somebody else, just don't be going for just only no white guy. But you, but you can't blame them somebody. because they looking at a man. Oh, no, I don't blame him. No, nope, I don't blame him. Nope, I don't blame. I mean, you. They understand this, that the more money a man got, the better parada he got. We could have been in that position, but we allowed the society to derail us because this, with them it's all about they the ones being sent to his schools for academic success. And see, she realized, wow, you know, the, the white man lifted me up more than a brother. You know, giving me all these positions and vice presidents. You know, mm -hmm. you got this job on working Amazon. You got a lot of sisters and supervisors. One sister, she's she a most of the white folks in there, and she a sister. <laughs> so, right. so, so they yeah, know they I don't want. blame them. No, <laughs> I don't blame them at all. Take the money, sure. I understand. No, <laughs> take, <laughs> take it. It's good though. The, it's, the, it's the prestige to come with the money. It's a certain respect. Right. So you want them to take the money. We need to be in a position where we produce industries based on the same thing that they do. We need clothes. Exactly. We need food. We need shelter. Yeah. Yeah. Furniture, you just gotta keep pushing for it. Things we can produce, but we just don't want to. Yeah, I like, but I like. I just said, you know, I like the farming channels. I like what you're talking about. So, yeah. Definitely. But like I said, be a lookout because Terrence is going to have his little channel ready soon. You know, when everything's oh, set up. Yeah, I'm I'm see. Food economy, yeah. where we we grow our own food and we direct market it 
to each other. No, we, we got a farming man. channel. We got farming channel on uh on Facebook, and uh, you know, we got that B one Ag. We've got a grow grow uh grow hard competition. There's a there's a, a competition for black growers going on right now, and uh, I'm teaching my kids how to. I'm I'm learning too, so I ain't gonna lie. I don't know nothing about growing. But, but like a, like I said. Mm-hmm. Stay, stay tuned. Oh, just stay tuned. I, I got you covered. I got you covered. Right. But thank you. Okay. Don't worry. I got yep, you. Yep. Once, once yep. I got. I'm gonna, you, I'm gonna let you close it out. I'm gonna let you close it out strong, brother. I'm glad you guys uh had me up. I'm, it was a mm-hmm. good con- con- conversation. And I'm gonna share it on mm-hmm. out. Peace out, right. Roy. Peace. Peace out. Thank you. Yes. Yes. All right. All right. Well, I like, thank everybody for. Um, oh, before I close out, for closure for this, people. Um. Obviously, the agenda is real. And the only thing you're going to see moving forward in this decade, we are you're going to see them push it more. You're going to see people create channels that's already existing. They're going to shit on the black man because it's open season for the black man. Even to the point now where it's actually profitable. Like I said on my previous channel, on it makes it safer to talk about the black man because it makes their money. It's profitable. You're not going to get flagged. You're not going to get any censor. If you talk about black man, you do anything good on any media outlet talking about and showing the black men, the black boys. Period. That's why you see these conversations are being pushed back by other men, especially other black men, because we shouldn't have no echo chamber where people just want green lights. I don't care where it comes from. So if you decide you that you follow Mr. Richard Banks, method about their options and you wait for validation from black men just to go out and explore options i mean i mean good luck to that i mean because let's be honest i want black women hear me this tell me any group of men said go explore your options if you find any videos of these other groups of men said tell their own group of women go explore your options this that third i will concede and be the first to say yes and mind you, when you find these videos, I want a number of hundreds of those videos from not only white men, Asian men, um, Latin men, which are all white men besides Asian white, but you know, you get you get point. Send me these videos, post them on my channel in the comment section, the links. I will watch them. If you can feel roughly either, I, I'll make it easier. Make it sixty. Videos at each six video, it should be composed of different groups of non-black men telling their women if if I'm not the right catch or some wrong me or adequate, please explore your options. If you can find it, I will concede and say yes. You need to explore your options. <laughs> you should explore your options because other groups of men gave you validation. If you can't find this, then by all means, you know what it is. So that's all. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for listening to today's broadcast. You know, be on the lookout for the next broadcast or upload here on the Chaos Rain channel. Also, one second, I'm Terrence. Also, uh, follow me on Twitter at Chaos Rain 7. And you can now add me as a friend on Facebook, Eric Grant on Facebook. And my Discord service is on the About section on my YouTube page. And make sure you subscribe to the channel. On that, thank you for listening. And like always, you know where to find me.
Thank you,